As you know, I always like to be the bearer of good news, and today I am delighted to tell you that I have just saved the federal government an absolute fortune. In fact, I've saved Jim Chalmers' first proper budget literally billions of dollars. Jim, you can thank me later, it's fine, or just buy me a beer. Not only that, I have saved the nation from tearing itself apart for no reason whatsoever over a ridiculously expensive and hugely divisive 2023 referendum. You see, under my plan, tomorrow morning, Anthony Albanese and Linda Burney can stand at the top of the steps of Parliament House and proudly announce, the good news, Australia, we don't need an Indigenous voice to Parliament because we already have one. Yes, folks, we already have the voice in all but name, and it's even got a funky cool video which I'll play you in a tick. It's called the National Indigenous Australians Agency, or NIAA. So what do the NIAA do exactly? Good question. Well, according to their website, their vision, which is a laudable one, is to ensure Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders are recognised and empowered and heard. By definition, someone can only be heard if they already have a voice. But it gets better. The NIAA's purpose, according to their own website, is to enable the self-determination of First Nations communities, which is pretty much exactly what the Uluru Statement from the Heart wants the voice to do. But more importantly, it says it right here. The NIAA works to ensure Indigenous Australians have a say in the decisions that affect them. Have a say? Hang on, let's just check my online thesaurus here and holy moly, stone the crows. To have a say means exactly the same as to have a voice. This is incredible. We already have a powerful, purposeful Indigenous Australian body that has a voice. And what do the NIA do with that voice? Well, quite a bit as it happens. Again, quoting their own words, with their, should I say their voice, they support the implementation of the national agreement on closing the gap to ensure the First Nations peoples achieve life outcomes equal to all Australians. This is excellent, good stuff, great work. We need to close that gap, glad they're onto it. Next, they improve economic opportunities and outcomes for First Nations peoples and businesses. Well, yes, let's give a big tick to that. That's a must do. And funnily enough, it's exactly what both Jacinta Nampajimpa Price and Yungai Warren Mundine keep talking about. Then the NIA say that they insist in the maintenance of Indigenous cultural expression and conservation. Good, because that's important. We want to preserve Indigenous cultural expression, and obviously you can't do that without having a say, or should I say, having a voice. So that's all tickety-boo, and the NIA are doing it. So let's move on. This NIA mob, they support the well-being of First Nations peoples through early childhood development, school attendance and attainment, and post-school pathways. Well, hello. Alice Springs, anyone? Yes, childhood development, education and employment opportunity are exactly what is needed and what the voice people keep telling us we need. No question. And finally, the NIA enhances regional governance and local decision making. Brilliant. That pretty much ticks every single box that the voice people want the voice to do as well, almost word for word. But the NIAA mob don't need a referendum to get on with it. They're already doing it. Full marks to the NIAA. But wait, there's more. According to the website, they have been instructed under an executive order from the Governor General, no less, that among their numerous responsibilities, the NIAA must provide advice to the Prime Minister and the Minister for Indigenous Australians on whole of government priorities for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island peoples. Bingo! In a nutshell, that's kind of the whole point of the voice, to provide the parliament, and therefore the PM, with advice on Indigenous priorities. But hang on, that does raise one tiny little question. I mean, I hate to be a party pooper, but what if the advice to the PM from the NIAA 
is the complete opposite to the advice to Parliament from The Voice. Mm. Jeez, there you go again, Rowan. Always the spoil sport, always the killjoy, pouring cold water on everything. I know, I know. I'm sorry. But back to the NIA. Who exactly are these selfless, wonderful people who are already doing the job that the voice people say we need a voice to do? Well, here's Jody Broom. She's the boss of the NIA and she's a Yin Jim Bandi woman from the Pilbara in Western Australia. According to the NIA website, CEO Jody has maintained strong connections to country, to community and to culture throughout her whole life. Is there an echo in here? Because that's what the voice people keep insisting the voice is all about, maintaining grassroots links to indigenous communities, culture and country. But that's just for starters. Jodie is also passionate about social justice. Very good. The love is, well, like that. She's passionate about community-led co-design. There's that voice echo again. And she's passionate about changing the way government does business with Aboriginal communities. Jodie, you legend, that's precisely the whole point of the voice. And you, you little ripper, you're already doing it. And it's not as if Jodie and her team don't have plenty of resources to do it all with, because I know that's your next question. Jodie and the NIAA have got a lot on their plate. Where's the money coming from? Well, from you and from me, actually, just as it will also with The Voice. According to the NIA's annual report, last year Jodie and her team spent nearly $290 million on expenses. So that's a lot of money. So they must have been able to achieve a hell of a lot of good stuff for Indigenous Australia with that amount of money. You'll notice, of course, that 165 odd million of that went on salaries and wages, superannuation, defined benefits, that sort of thing. So hopefully everybody is being very well paid for doing this invaluable work. As for the total cash load, the NIAA's total cash from the official public account is just over $2 billion. So that's good. It's a lot of money. But hey, it's all in a good cause. But as I said at the top, the Aussie taxpayer, always generous to a fault, clearly, isn't necessarily so flush with cash that we can afford two voices, both basically doing exactly the same sort of stuff, give or take, and both costing us billions and billions of dollars. So here's my plan to save the Aussie taxpayer literally billions of dollars and make Anthony Albanese's life a whole lot easier. All we have to do is change one word in the name of the NIAA. Change agency, which let's face it is a bit of a tainted word with association with words like real estate agency or heaven forbid advertising agency. So we ditch the word agency and replace it with the much better word voice. Voila! The NIAA becomes the NIAV. NIAV, the National Indigenous Australian's Voice. What could be better? And just watch this promo very carefully and you will see that the National Indigenous Australian Agency, which can be the voice tomorrow, is already doing everything. Yes, everything with billions of dollars that those voice aficionados tell us only the voice can do.
There you have it, folks. Why vote yes to a billion-dollar Indigenous voice to Parliament when we already have one?